Welcome in to Campus Store Live, where NFL players are the experts on college football. I'm your host, Drew Butler, joined alongside Aaron Murray. And Aaron, the SEC was back this past week, and we had a full slate of college football. Finally, something felt normal, and wow, did we get treated to some great games. Wall-to-wall action from noon until midnight. A lot of top five teams were in play. And let's just head right to the SEC. Of course, they're playing a 10-game conference-only schedule this season. And we saw a couple of upsets. We saw a couple of head scratchers. So let's do a little stock up and down. I'll throw it to you first. Give me your stock up. I think I might know where you're going with your first pick here. Well, first off, it was just so good to see SEC ball. Um, And and I just want to say... It was it was really clean yeah. football too, which was a little bit surprising because yeah. we saw some some ups and downs from some other conferences to start the season, and they, you'd expect that with you know lack of spring ball, a short and fall camp. But I thought the SEC for the majority of these teams came out and, and played really really efficiently. So it, it was really good football to watch. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's good to have the SEC back playing again, and and hopefully we're going to get that for this entire season. But you know who I'm going for my stock up. Mississippi State. I called it last week. I said these boys have a chance to win this football game. Don't sleep on them. LSU lost too much this offseason. Coaches and players and Heisman Trophy winners and first-round draft picks and Joe Burrow. So uh, Mississippi State, I tell you what, with Mike Leach at the helm, this is an exciting football team. KJ Costello, stock up for him too. Put him in the Heisman talk already. Uh, It was just a great game. And I even thought their defense – showed up and played a little bit too. Yes, I said it. This kid every single week is going to be putting up stupid numbers. When's the last time you saw an SEC team throw the ball 60-plus times a game and only ran at 16? All right, now, if everybody's scratching your heads at home, Aaron Murray just said K.J. Costello and Heisman Trophy. Last season, after week one or two, you said Joe Burrow and Heisman Trophy, and that came to be true. Look, we've all wondered over the years what it took Mike Leach's offense and put it in the SEC. He's off to a great start. I mean, they just demolished 44-34, to 34, the defending champion, LSU Tigers. Stock down for me. I mean, you could go any direction. I'm not going to go LSU. You said it last week. They've got so much to replace, you just don't know. I'm actually going to go with Kentucky. Yeah, that's right. Kentucky went on the road, lost to Auburn. They were ranked in the preseason top 25. You said you saw a lot of clean football. Kentucky did not play clean football. Penalties, turnovers, third down penalties, third down turnovers. It really cost them the game. I hate blaming the refs, but I'm going to blame the refs here. It was, what, eight to seven. Kentucky's on the four-yard line. They run it in, and they call four progress stop. That was complete nonsense. They should have been up. 14-8 14-8 at halftime. Instead, interception, momentum swings to Auburn before halftime, and then Auburn runs away with it in the second half. So I'm blaming the referees for at least not covering the spread for Kentucky. So. <laughs> I'm all about blaming inept referees. I mean, it's about time Elon Musk automates the profession and we get some real consistency going from a referee standpoint. But where my stock is up, I'm heading to Rocky Top. Tennessee goes on the road, beats South Carolina 31-27. Thought the offense looked great. And you know what, Aaron? Special teams was a huge factor for Tennessee. They got a pick six as well from the defensive side of the ball. Jeremy Pruitt's first week one win as the coach at Tennessee. Just watch out for the Vols. They could present some issues to the likes of Florida and Georgia throughout this season. Whose stock are you down? I'm going to go stock down for uh, our, our Bulldogs in that offense. Holy smokes. That was some of the worst offense I've seen uh, that Bulldogs ever play. It, it, it was tough to see, and I, I just feel bad because it was the first time my little my little man Maddox <laughs> got to watch some Georgia football, and he just looked sad yeah. that entire first half. I just had to apologize to him a couple times. There's a lot of issues, and I know people want to blame Dewan Mathis, and, and, and Dewan did not play well. There's no excuse for that, but no one else played well. The offensive line did, was was pretty pitiful there in the first quarter. There was no offense. There was no run game that 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 occurred. And there's just no really big play potential from the wideouts. You got George Pickens, but George Pickens is a big receiver, and he's really good in the red zone. He's going to win some one-on-one matchups, but he's not a guy that's going to take a slant, catch it, make a guy miss, and and take it for 70 yards. That's just not who he is. There's not a lot of big play potential on that offense. We don't even know who the quarterback is going to be heading into this week. Is it going to be Dwan Mathis? Is it Setson Bennett? Is it JT Daniels who just got cleared? Uh, Who knows, but – 
Right now, it's more than just the quarterback. There's a lot of issues going on with that offense. Yeah, it looked bad for that first half, but Georgia did bounce back in the second half, beat Arkansas 37-10 to on the road to start their season 1-0. One team that didn't look good and lost was a number three-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. Aaron, they had a block punt late in the game to lose to Kansas State. Spencer Rattler, a lot of media was fawning over him after his first week, throwing to wide open receivers all day long in the pocket. I said, let's pump the brakes for a second. This is not Baker Mayfield. This is not Kyler Murray. We need to relax and wait and see what this Oklahoma team is going to be. They're 0-1. That's not a good start for the Big 12. These first few weeks of these guys playing has been terrible. Major losses, uh, close games that shouldn't be close. Let's put in an American yeah. team. Cincinnati, UCF, yep. if one of these guys go undefeated, they need a chance at the dinner table with the big boys. And I just want to see one of the little guys finally get a shot. And then if they play great, then maybe it goes forward and we make it happen again. And if they get their butt waxed, then we can just stop the conversation and move on and never have it again. Campus Lore Live is the official hype train for the American Athletic Conference. If your team has a legitimate chance to make it into the playoff, we will carry that water for you. And when we come back from break, we're actually going to look at, and I know it's way too early, we're going to look at the college football playoff and talk about who we think looks pretty good in that regard right now. So come on right back after the break. You're watching Campus Over Live. Oh, yeah, we are back. Campus Lore Live, Drew Butler, Aaron Murray. Aaron, I got juiced up in that first segment just talking about SEC football. We're kicking the Big 12 out. We're kicking the Pac-12 out. They haven't even started yet. Big 10, Ohio State, you might be the only hope. But let's look at the college football playoff. And first off, I'm going to give these guys a lot of credit. That's right. I'm going to give the college football playoff committee a lot of credit. And I don't usually do that. They have been extremely patient with waiting out their decisions in regards to everything that's been going on in this unprecedented college football season. But we're off to a great start. Miami is 3-0. and They are dismantling teams. De'Ara King and Rhett Lashley, they're off to a fantastic start on the offensive side of the ball. You got your usual suspects, Alabama, Clemson, who knows about Georgia and Florida. Can Ohio State run the table and get into the conversation? But the first question I want to ask you is, are the Canes for real? And could the ACC actually have two legitimate contenders, Clemson and another? Clemson and Miami is going to be absolutely electric. This Miami team, offensively, is, is on a different level since Eric King got yeah. here uh, to, the, to, to campus. It's been really fun to watch. We all knew Miami had talent on both sides of the football. They just needed a, a, really a quarterback to believe it. And, and I've been saying it for weeks, a quarterback – and the energy that he can bring to a locker room is, is infectious. And right now you're seeing it from the scene. They're playing with the belief that they can compete every single game, they can win, and then they can dominate. I mean, they were unstoppable last weekend, and I, I think that's going to be for the majority of the season. It's just too much talent, too much speed. The fact that both of us have really said, Big 12, you're gone. Big 10 is a limited schedule, so say one of those teams loses. Yeah, it's tough. Then it gets really hairy. So there's going to be a really interesting conversation come the end of the season. And right now for these teams, all you can do is take care of what you can do on the football field. That's just win, win, win. And right now Miami's doing all they can. It's been really fun to watch those guys go out there and just dominate on both sides of the football. Yeah, I mean, their defense isn't really getting enough credit. I know they got into a – well, they let up a couple of late points against Louisville, but they've got great talent on the edge there with a pass rush and depth. They rotate those guys in. They get after the quarterback, and they present a lot of issues. You know they don't lack athletes – down in Coral Gables. So Miami is about to get a reality check because they play Clemson the week after this one coming up. So it's a contender or pretender type situation. Can Manny Diaz, can Rhett Lashley dial something up to give the Clemson Tigers some troubles? Don't forget about Notre Dame. I mean, your boy Ian Book, Notre Dame, looks like they're going to be pretty formidable as well. I think the SEC will have a legitimate chance to get two teams in also. But the conference-only schedule is going to present issues and the limited schedule in the Big Ten. Like you said, I mean, if Ohio State loses a close game to a Penn State or a Wisconsin, that's one thing. If they drop one like they did a couple of years ago on the road at Purdue, they're out. It's as simple as that. And then our boys from the American Athletic Conference can put their flag in the ground and say, give us a seat at the table. That very well could happen 
in 2020. It's fun to talk about it. We got a long way to go. Hopefully this season continues to move along consistently and we will keep our eye on how the college football playoff will shake out. That certainly makes big news headlines. But one of the bigger headlines in the world of college football from this past week was Deion Sanders being named the head coach at Jackson State. That's right, prime on the sideline, going to be coaching up Jackson State, which is an HBCU football team. What are your thoughts on this, Aaron? I know Dion coaches high school football, but let's be honest here. It's fun, the flair, the headlines, the escalade at the news press conference. Dude, you got to win football games. I mean, I like that. I think it's fun. It's going to be a results-driven analysis here on his stint as a head coach. It's a big change from coaching high school ball and, it, like you said, being fun to now this is this is a job yeah. and you have to be there 24 seven. And then the off season, you got to be able to go out there and recruit and bring guys in. I mean, this isn't just a hey, let's show up after school and install a couple plays Friday night and Saturday Sunday we're hanging out yeah. and you know, just having fun. This is grind all week from about 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Go out there and, and still have to recruit during the week as well, even during the season. Get ready for the game on Saturday, back in the office on Sunday, and get right back to work bright and early. I mean, it is a 24-7 job, uh, and that's the reason why I'm not co coaching college football. Yeah, we'll certainly be watching how Prime does as he becomes the head coach at Jackson State. Well, when you come back, we're going to be joined by our guest this week, and it's none other than T. Higgins. T's coming off a two-touchdown performance this past weekend for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's a Clemson football legend, so we will definitely ask him about the prospects of the number one ranked Tigers for this 2020 season. Come on right back. You're watching Campus Store Live. All right, let's welcome in our guest on this week's episode of Campus Lore Live. Thrilled to be joined by T. Higgins, 33rd overall draft pick in the 2020 NFL Draft for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's a wide receiver from Clemson University, coming off a two-touchdown performance this past weekend against the Philadelphia Eagles. T., thanks so much for joining us. All right, T., let's talk about the 2020 Clemson Tigers, ranked number one in the nation right now. So much experience, so much talent. So much depth, and this is an unprecedented season. The ACC is playing nine conference games and one game out of conference. They've welcomed in Notre Dame to the ACC. Miami's off to a fantastic start. They're 3-0 and and already in the top 10. Clemson, I think, is the best team in the nation right now, but it seems like this season they might have some real threats inside their own conference. Do you see a team like Miami or Notre Dame or even North Carolina being able to upset Clemson during the season? Uh, yeah, I can agree with you that uh, Clemson's number one in the nation. You know, we are the best team. But Miami and Notre Dame, those those teams have been playing really well lately. And um, but you know, I don't think they have a chance against us. You know, we got them. We got some dogs on the defense. You know, um, the the front the front uh, line, the D line. They they've been playing really well lately. And then our back seven. You know, with, with those guys that got drafted, um, a lot of the young guys have stepped up. And then on the offensive side, uh, our old line is playing really good. Then you got Trevor and Travis, some vets, and you got Amari and Cornell, and you know the young guys Frank and Joe on the outside. So, you know, um, I feel like we're gonna get it done this year. T, obviously you had so much success with Trevor Lawrence, your college quarterback, and now you busted onto the scene in the NFL with number one overall draft pick Joe Burrow, who had one of the more remarkable college football seasons in history. These are two of the most prolific college quarterbacks that we've seen in quite some time. So talk a little bit about some of their similarities, maybe some of their differences. You got to be thrilled that you've been able to play with two such talented guys. Yeah, um, both of them, they have, they, they're, they're good in, diff in, in different ways. You know, um, Joe, he's a guy that, that can really attack and really hurt defenses when he scrambles, you know, um, and Trevor, he, he's a guy that's just, you know, he's Trevor. Yeah, as y'all can see, that y'all seen him play. Uh, he's the guy that's, that plays with poise. I mean, they both play with poise. Um, you can't really say what's different and what's, you know, what's different about them because they, they kind of play really similar in the way, you know, how, how much poise they play with and confident they play with. It is crazy. You know, Aaron, you and I saw Trevor Lawrence a couple of years ago when he was coming out of high school. We looked up legitimately six foot six as an 18, 19 year old. You're looking at this guy going, holy cow, he is NFL ready. And then 
I had the opportunity to see Joe Burrow in person last year take on Georgia in the SEC championship game and what he was able to do, getting outside the pocket, throwing with accuracy on the run, extending plays, moving drives downfield. That's why he won the Heisman. That's why LSU ran through their slate and won the national championship. So pretty remarkable, okay, no so. doubt. Joe, uh, Joe Burrow was fantastic. Aaron, T is off to a great start for the Cincinnati Bengals this NFL season. And T, I just want to let you know, a lot of our guests, after they come on this show, they continue to have really good performances. So maybe three or four touchdowns are in your near future. We will certainly be keeping our tabs on you. So thanks so much for joining us. And when we come back, Aaron and I are going to run through this weekend's slate of college games and give you our picks of the week. You're watching Campus Lore Live. Huge thanks to T. Higgins for joining us this week, Aaron. I know you had some great wide receivers at Georgia, but what they're doing at Clemson by pumping out NFL talent, I mean, just take your pick. Throw the ball up. Somebody's going to go get it. You're going to be putting up good numbers if you're the quarterback for the Tigers. Well, it also helps that you look at the quarterbacks they've had for the past yeah. decade. It's been unbelievable. I mean, just receivers and quarterbacks, it's a dream come true to go play at Clemson in that offense with Dabo as the head coach. It's fun. It's a fun environment. They throw the ball a ton, and then don't forget they got great running backs too as well. So it's just there's just too much talent. They recruit so well. Their facilities are through the roof. So all that mixed together, you're going to win a lot of ball games. You're going to get a lot of dudes drafted into the NFL, and, and T. Higgins is one of them. And I just tell you what, he has been really lucky, and he's a heck of a football oh, player. I mean, he's yeah. a hell of a receiver. But to have Trevor Lawrence as your college quarterback, and then turn around and have Joe Burrow now for for a long time as your NFL quarterback. That is pretty darn sweet. What else is sweet is a game that's going to hit us this week in a top 10 matchup in the SEC. So let's dive right into it. Number seven, Auburn, is heading to Athens, Georgia, to take on the number four ranked Georgia Bulldogs. This game historically has been played late in the season in November. It's the second week of the SEC season, Aaron. And we got a huge rivalry game that's going to have big time implications for who ends up in the SEC championship. Yeah, it's going to be interesting for Georgia. First, who's going to be the quarterback? I mean, that's that's the, the million-dollar question everyone wants to know. JT Daniels is clear. Uh, the coaching staff obviously was not very happy with Dewan Mathis in that first game pulling him. I thought Stetson Bennett came in there and was really efficient. And honestly, that that is maybe all you need if you're Georgia, just a quarterback who's going to take care of the football, take completions, not super flashy, but at the end of the day, you just got to be able to run the football and just let that defense go out there and do their thing. Auburn, I thought, really impressive week one. Most impressed with Bo Nix. Uh, you're talking about a guy last year who I thought in the pocket literally looked like a chicken with his head cut off. His footwork was terrible. He was all over the place. He was escaping the pocket too soon. It was just – it felt like there was a lot going on for him, both physically and mentally during the ball games. And then you watch him this past weekend, super smooth. Great footwork, seemed very lax in the pocket, great accurate throws down the football field. So big props to his new coordinator, Chad Morris. I thought he did a great job of settling him into the ball game early on. If you took Stetson Bennett's name off the stat line and looked at his stats from this past week, and you'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that every week. Um, and then you look at the coordinator matchup, Chad Morris against Dan Lanning, offensive coordinator for Auburn against defensive coordinator for Georgia. That's going to determine who wins this game. It'll be a knockout fight. For sure. Let's head to the SEC West where Texas A&M is heading to Tuscaloosa to take on Alabama. Texas A&M did not look good last week. Alabama did what it needed to do against Missouri. I think Alabama is just way better than Texas A&M. It's disappointing because you're thinking Jimbo Fisher, year three, Kellen Mond, uh, who has a lot of talent, was going to take a huge step forward. And, and they just really did not look Great. I mean, maybe they were just, you know, keeping the playbook pretty simple, not really wanting to show a lot to Alabama. I think that it was really one of the main issues that that's why they didn't put a ton of points on the board. But still, the talent difference between them and Alabama at the moment is significant. You look at Alabama with Mac Jones just really doing a tremendous job, looking like he's been in this offense for years. So I like Alabama to run away with this. And, and I even started off the season saying, listen, it was Alabama who was the cream of the crop in the SEC and especially the SEC West. And then I thought AM would be that number two team. And honestly, looking at the way week one shaped out to be, you got to say Alabama's still that number one team. Yeah, I agree with you there. Let's head back to the SEC East. South Carolina coming off that tough loss in week one against Tennessee is heading to the swamp to take on Florida. Look, Florida looked great on the offensive side of the ball. Kyle Pitts is a bona fide All American. 
But that defense, man, they gave up over 600 yards, Aaron. Well, the, the issue is for Grantham, the defense coordinator for Florida, is he, he really didn't know who was going to be the starting quarterback for Ole Miss. It's a new system. Yeah. You had a couple options, so you, you have to prepare for two guys that are very different. So I think they know what they're facing uh, in South Carolina, and obviously Grantham knows Coach Bobo because they were both together at University of Georgia, practiced yeah. against each other. I'm really excited to see those two shake hands or say hello because they were some heated Heated arguments. Oh, yeah. That's when those two were the coordinators of the University of Georgia. Florida is just too much offensively. Kyle Trask is 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 a legitimate Heisman candidate this year. He looked really comfortable year two uh, as as a starter and and just the weapons that he has around him. Kyle Pitts is an absolute stud. He is going to be a first round pick in the NFL draft. He is a matchup nightmare. I've been saying it for years now. And let's not forget they got a bunch of fast dudes around him at the receiving position as well. So. This Florida offense is just going to be too much for South Carolina to handle. Kyle Trask, legitimate Heisman candidate, Aaron Murray, late September. Writing that down. Let's look at Tennessee. They're welcoming Missouri. Missouri 0-1. Tennessee 1-0. Could this be a letdown spot? You know Eli Drinkwitz is going to be wanting that first victory as the head coach of Missouri. I don't think so. I think he saw a really comfortable Garantano uh, in, in the second year of the system. I thought he played really well, very accurate. Once again, calm feet. So if he can continue to play like that and continue to find playmakers like Josh Palmer on the outside, I think this team's going to be pretty darn good. I like Tennessee, and I think this is a team, just like I said, watching them week one, they're going to make some noise this, this entire season, especially in the East. Okay, Georgia scored five points in the first half against Arkansas last week. Mississippi State hosts Arkansas this week. How many points do your Mississippi State Bulldogs score against Arkansas? It's going to be ugly. I'm, I'm anticipating this game, at least for Mississippi State, to get in the high 40s, low 50s. It's just it's going to be too much for Arkansas to handle. Um, it's just all the weapons. And then I talked about earlier the fact that this offense is going to get better and better every week because they just haven't had a lot of opportunities with no spring ball and limited reps in fall camp to work out all the kinks. No doubt. Going to be fun to watch how good that offense can become over the season. All right, let's wrap this thing up, get some quick picks going, head to the Big 12. TCU heads to Texas. Texas defense looks awful, but they're scoring a ton of points. I like Texas in this game, Aaron. I like Texas too. Sam Ellinger at quarterbacks had a great start to the season. Um, but if there, there's an over on this one, take the over, over under, because <laughs> – there's no defense in this conference. It's every single year you see it. You just hope someone would eventually play defense. And uh, Texas ain't it, and, and neither is TCU. This could be a high-scoring ball game. No doubt. Oklahoma looking for a bounce back. They're heading to Ames, Iowa, to take on Iowa State. Can Spencer Rattler right the ship? They're a bunch of winners. They know how to win. And, and I think they're going to respond well after coming off this loss this past weekend. We're going to see what kind of quarterback Rattler is. I like Oklahoma. I think they're more talented. I think they turn things around and, and get the win this weekend. Virginia, who played the New Year's Six Bowl just a year ago, is going to head to Clemson to take on the number one ranked Clemson Tigers. Any chance they give Trevor Lawrence and crew a scare? Because I would think not. Trevor Lawrence will play through uh, midway through the third quarter, maybe towards the end of the third quarter, and then get pulled. They're just too strong. They're too good. There's maybe you know a handful of teams in the ACC that can hang with them right now. Virginia is not that team. I see Clemson rolling in this one. Yeah, you just said North Carolina. They're heading to take on Boston College. You're wearing your Tar Heel blue. Will the Heels take care of business? I think they're pretty good and pretty stout team in the ACC. Yeah, I, I love Sam Howell quarterback. It was unfortunate they had a, they missed a game to. Continue to, yeah. to get going early on in the season. But North Carolina with him at quarterback, uh, with a talent around him, I like North Carolina in this one. Well, we had a, another full weekend of college football. We're thrilled to be able to break it down and you joining us right here on Campus Tour Live. So with that being said, for Aaron, I'm Drew. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching Campus Tour Live.